Yes, you must oh, be. Oh, God, thank you. Right. Carlos, your weapon, sir? I think it's already on. See, okay. minus test. Testing one, two. Hi, I'm Robert McBride of All Classical Portland. You are the audience, in case you didn't know that. Carlos Calmar is the music director of the Oregon Symphony. Good evening. So who do you suppose <laughs> this man might be? This man would be Wolfgang. Mark Anthony, boy that sounds ancient Greek already, doesn't it? Mark Anthony Turnage, the composer of the first music on the show tonight. who I didn't know I was going to get to meet, so I'm very pleased to do that. I didn't that. tell you about this. No. Uh, <laughs> I came in here, I saw three stools, I thought, hmm. Uh. <laughs> I asked Garrick Olson, he said, no, no, it must be the composer. Yeah. So yeah. good. Sorry about that. So how is it that you're giving the premiere of a piece written by this gentleman, but it wasn't commissioned by the orchestra, was it? <laughs> I didn't know that. Did you pay, pay any money for it? I think so. <laughs> I thought you did. did. did I'm I thought, pretty sure you did. Actually, this piece is commissioned by three different orchestras. Yeah. Oh, it's one of those. Okay. Yeah. It's, Which is pretty common these days. It, essentially, it, it, when that's pretty common because nobody has money, and and <laughs> and the composer needs to make a living. Uh, it's that simple. So we co-commission. In this case, if I remember it well, it's three orchestras. It's the Oregon Symphony. New Zealand, yeah. the Auckland or the... It's, uh, yeah, it's in Auckland. Yeah. Auckland. Um, and Liverpool. Yeah. Royal Liverpool Philharmonic, yeah. Yep. Oh, which I've worked with before. I've never been to New Zealand, so I don't know what to expect. It's great. It's a long way away. Uh, yeah, it's really far. Yeah, so, and I think, which I assume Mark doesn't even know, that's so coincidence. So this is the world premiere in Portland, Oregon. I think next time it's going to be in New Zealand. Mm, yes, it is, and yeah. next season is going to be in Liverpool. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Do you know well, you who know the conductor is? No, I don't, no. Oh, you, seriously, it is. Oh, I oh. didn't know that. Okay, brilliant. Well, that's fun. That helps, yeah. Will you yeah. go to New Zealand for those? Yeah. Um, um, is one of New Zealand's going to be with you, you mean? No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you should go since uh, yeah, you're not I, 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 Yeah, anyways, but, well, <laughs> we'll see. It's a long way away. I have a, I'm, I'm, sort of, I'm not scared of flying, but it... Anyway, I didn't want to hear this. Yeah, that is a long way. <laughs> that is a very, very, very long yeah. flight. Yeah. <laughs> so where do you live, sir? I live in London, yes. Um, and how long have you been writing music? Were you a kid when you started? Yeah, well, it's, uh, yeah it's a, since the age of nine. It's very strange, really, why, why, why that happened. I, I used to... Um, my, this sounds really bad, but my parents um, forced me to play the piano. I'm really grateful mm -hmm. that they forced me now. But um, I used to find practicing the piano very boring at the age of six. And so I used to distort the pieces I had to practice. And that's how I ended up writing. So about the age of nine, I decided that I wanted to be a composer. That was going to be my job for life, which is really strange thinking now, especially having kids and stuff. Um, the idea of wanting to be a composer. But I used to um, write things down, but I didn't really know how to do it properly right. at the age of nine. So none of the pieces I wrote at the age of nine really make any sense. But I just had this feeling that's what I wanted to do. Billy Joel tells a funny story of when he was taking piano lessons as a kid. He too was really bored by having to work on the same stuff yeah. over and over again. So he would just make up his own things. Mm. And his mom would be doing something and listening and she didn't realize what he was yes, doing. And so then she would say, yeah. Well, why don't you play that thing you played yesterday? And he'd go, you can, you can yeah. do it. It's a very similar situation. Oh, I don't a lot in common with Billy Joel. I didn't realize I had. But it's very similar. I think a lot of composers or creative people who write music have the same situation. Is that, you know, you know obviously pianists and somebody like Garrick Olsen has really practiced a lot in his life, you know. And, and, I, and I, I wasn't a particularly good pianist, but um, I love the idea of practicing and just doing, you know, being, I'm just, I just, my mum was a, um, my mum is, um, a Beethoven freak, and she, she loved Beethoven, so I grew up with this incredible music, really. I wasn't allowed to listen to pop music, that was sort of forbidden, um, which has been interesting because I've got, a, you know, a lot of my pieces now, well, not so much pop music, but in, you know, working with jazz players. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's made it more attractive for me, because I think if you ban something from your forbidden children, fruit. Yeah, you actually get more interested in it. <laughs> Anyway, that's the story. So, do you compose at the piano? I do, actually, yeah. And I had a teacher um, at the age of, well, when I was 18, actually, who, who said I shouldn't. And, and then, then, if you think about it, uh, there's quite a few very distinguished composers. Uh, Haydn, Wagner, and Stravinsky. So, that's good enough for me that, you know, you should, <laughs> they, you know, you should write. I, I, it's up to you. I mean, in the sense that I... Um, 
I just, it's, I've always, I mean, I do write away from the piano as well, but my, my initial ideas probably come from working at the piano. Including the piece we'll hear tonight? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. The initial ideas. And then I go away and sort of think about it, but it's just, you know, it's something that I've done, you know, since I was six, really. Or not but I bet you work on it in your head a lot, too, yeah. if you're just lying in bed, you're yeah. thinking about it. It's not great for other people, uh, you know, close friends or family, because you, especially the first couple of weeks when you're writing, starting to write a piece, you, you, you're very distracted. They're going yeah. like this. To yeah, you, a little bit. Know, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I've learned to switch off more as I get older, but it is, it is a strange thing, because if you think about it, when people, you know, go to parties and they meet people the first time, they say, what do you do? Um, it's a tricky one, because, you know, you're hearing things in your head, basically, which is not great. Uh, in a sense. <laughs> like, you, you can't hear this? What do you mean, yeah, what do I do? Yeah. You... But also they say, what, what, and the next question you always get is what instrument do you play? Because it is hard to understand somebody that writes music. It is a, most, most people think composers are dead, so, yeah. so in a sense, you know. It's most of the composers we'll hear tonight. Yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah. 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 So congratulations. I'm alive. You're still yeah. breathing. <laughs> Carlos, you've been wanting to interject something here. What you got? Well, actu uh, actually, I didn't... Uh, yesterday... So the world premiere, the real, uh, it's this weekend. Yesterday we already played it in Salem. And um, we do their uh, pre-concert talk as well. So it was the two of you. And uh, so I kind of put Mark on the spot. <laughs> but I didn't know that he was writing since age, since such a young age. So yeah. when was the first piece by you kind of... Okay, there it is. Uh, Publish it. Probably about, well, it was, I was quite young, about 20. But, yeah, but still, I mean, everything before that isn't really, it, it's not great. And I did withdraw a lot of things, even when I was younger. I had, I, you know, had quite a few performances, and that, that's quite upsetting sometimes for a, a, for a commissioner, because they commissioned the piece, and then next sort of year it's gone. Um, because I just, the pieces I just didn't, I wasn't very proud of. And there's nothing worse being invited to a, a concert of, of a piece you don't really like very much, so because <laughs> you have to smile and be sort of polite, but then you don't really like the piece very much. So, um, so, so in a sense, quite a lot of my early pieces don't, you know, they don't, they're, they're withdrawn. I mean, I might revisit them when I'm sort of older, even older than I am now. So, they st I want to say, is this one of those cases when you get? really old, which I hope, and you don't have the power anyway to say no, and some, mm. uh, some, some conductor says, mm. I discovered Turnage yeah. when he was 15, here it yeah. is. Um, well, a piece, yeah, it's, it's the best thing to do is get rid of it completely. <laughs> I'm not putting... <laughs> I mean, basically, I mean, burn it, like, like, like Sibelius did with the Eighth Symphony. I know it sounds, it sounds pretty brutal, but if you don't want... I mean, this is going to come up because we're going to talk about the Schubert, or you're going to talk about the Schubert, and, and it is interesting that, that you know, Brahms, for instance, I, I think, don't know if people know this, but I think he destroyed about 20 string quartets. I mean, it's incredible. Um, and, how how you can know, you do that? Well, you I just mean, did. It was just Brahms. Did, yeah, I know exactly. But you, <laughs> it's and for us, it's quite sad because I'm sure a lot of them are really good. But he didn't feel that they were up to what he was doing. So you know, I just think it's it, the, the composers should have the power to do that. But of course, some people, you know, they, they either die sometimes when a piece isn't finished, and so that is interesting as well. They they, cut, they are not, not totally in control of what goes out. I find Carlos, it. I'm curious. So you've been in this situation before where mm -hmm. you've conducted a new work yeah. and commissioned, been involved in the commissioning of new work. Have you ever gotten the new piece and thought, oh, you know, I don't really like this very much? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I mean, no names. Shall, oh, no uh, names. Because, uh, <laughs> but, and it's nobody How that... How about just initials? <laughs> <laughs> No, and it's and definitely somebody you never would have even known that it's a composer. But it <laughs> went... bad. Uh, that is a good thing that nobody knows that that person is a composer. Uh, so I had... So the way it works, actually, it's not so much that I look at the piece and think, I don't like this. Is that during the, the process of rehearsing it, you actually... No, this piece is of some minor interest, if I say it diplomatically correct, and it will have two, it will be played twice, which means the first and the last, that's it. <laughs> then it will rightly so disappear. 
One little anecdote is I once actually killed the bees, literally during rehearsal time, because there was a composer who simply, Mark was great yesterday in terms of, because one thing I can tell you about him is he writes crystal clear, you don't need a booklet to figure out, just read it. And there was a composer that I had the honor of doing a world premiere who simply didn't know how to write. Mm. It just, it's like not knowing the ABC and writing a novel. And after maybe 45 minutes and my orchestra was getting a little antsy, <laughs> and I said, I said to the orchestra, let me handle this. I said, everybody coffee meaning everybody goes away, and then I took the composer and said, look, this, 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 nobody actually knows what you mean. It's not happening, end of story. Wow, I hope that never happens to you. It hasn't, but it could still happen, I don't know. I mean, yeah. The thing is that it is a risk. When people commission, it is difficult, because of course you may like a composer very much, and you might like his past work, but he may produce something that isn't as up to the other things you liked. And, so it's very tricky. I mean, that's and you that, have you know. the right as a composer to try new things. And yeah, yeah. Be I mean, it's very it's interesting talking to, about this piece, um, which which was uh, the orchestra played brilliantly, you know, in rehearsal and last night actually. So it's gone very well. But there was actually I want to make a cut in the last movement of twelve bars. Um, it's it's just the one section is too long, and I don't know if we are going to get that tonight. I mean, I'm nervous about this because we shouldn't really be talking about this publicly. But I think oh it's, yes, we it, should. Um, I think it is. <laughs> It is interesting because composers get things, you know, I mean, it's like the, the, people talk about metronome marks, say, in Beethoven. Right. And I think that, I think he got those, I mean, I, I revere Beethoven more than anybody, but I think some of those metronome marks are wrong. I don't know if he had something wrong with his metronome, maybe that was going at the wrong speed, but it seems that some of these speeds are too tricky, they're too, too fast. Mm -hmm. So I think that composers, you know, once you hear things, even though you've got this idea in your head and you, you, know, you try and work it out perfectly, once you hear it on an orchestra, the things that don't, you know, balance things, I mean, I'm, most composers in rehearsal change a lot of balance and a lot of, um, you know, so they change their dynamics basically so they can hear things. But right. sometimes you miscalculate. And I thought at the time when I wrote this section, it's right before the end of the piece, it was slightly too long, but I wanted to hear it. And I, ah. But we haven't done it in rehearsal, so it's a bit of a, bit of a risk. But I think it will improve it quite a lot. This is a new work. I mean, yeah. you wrote it just this year. And, yeah. And, yeah. and, well, and in honor year. of yeah. in tribute to someone you knew and admired. Yeah, Richard Ronnie Bennett. I mean, I don't know, he's obviously very famous in England. Um, he, he is known in the States. He lived in New York, actually, from 79. He died in 2012. Um, he, he's quite well known. One of the things he did write was um, the music for the, music, uh, for the murder on the Orient Express. The, for, not the recent film, obviously, but the, the old one that was in the 70s. And so he wrote quite a lot of film scores. And he was a good friend for the last 10 years of his life. And I, I wanted to write something. So this piece, in a sense, is... I mean, I've written quite a lot of heavy pieces over the years, but this piece is, light. well, I think it's lighter. It probably isn't lighter for, what I think is light is usually for other people. It doesn't sound light, but it, it is quite a, um, you know, it's quite, it's quite an American, I think it's quite an American sounding piece as well, because I love jazz and I love, I work a lot with jazz musicians. So. Do you play jazz? No, well, I, I, yeah, behind closed doors. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know money. that one. Actually, well, no, no. <laughs> it's a country song behind. No, no what's yeah, his name? no, yeah. I just I wouldn't pay, you know, I don't pay, I would never play in front of anybody, but, um, but it's just for my own pleasure. I want to talk about, with both of you, unfinished pieces of music and attempts to finish them. <laughs> Franz Schubert died Ask at the age him. of 31, which is one of the great tragedies mm -hmm. in music. He was very prolific. He was especially prolific at writing unfinished pieces. He wrote unfinished symphonies and string quartets and piano trios and an oratorio. I don't know. He was just got distracted easily or what the deal was. So tonight we're going to hear one movement from an unfinished symphony by Schubert that's not the eighth. Carlos, how do you feel about things like this, like the finale of Bruckner 9? Let, let's, let's just explain one little thing. There is, because there is, thanks to Schubert, there is unfinished and unfinished. So there is the unfinished symphony, uh, which actually is a finished piece. Yeah. It just, it lacks two movements. Uh, and you really don't want to hear those movements in a certain way because yeah. the unfinished symphony is just a miracle. And then there are pieces that the composer, for one reason or the other, uh, has left just sketches. Um, 
And of course, in our thirst to complete something that a genius uh, kind of sketched out, there are great musicologists, sometimes conductors, who finish the job. So tonight we are going to hear the second movement of the Unfinished Unfinished, uh, Symphony Number no. 10 by Franz Schubert. And um, if you no, really know how to do it, you can go online and you can see what Schubert actually wrote, which is very, very little. And then you hear what, in this case, there are two completions. This one is by Peter Gülke. Um, you see what uh, solutions people come up with. It is, I think, to some extent historically interesting, and I'm not yet completely decided on this one, but I tell you one thing. Years ago, I, in this wonderful hall with, this, with all of you, I hope, present, I did the Daryl Cook version of Malaten, and I, I still believe what I said back then after doing it. This was a nice experience. Thank you very much. I don't want to do it ever again. Because, aside from the first movement, which is complete Mahler, the rest is just too marginal and no. There is too little music. Now, in what you are going to hear tonight, there is, there is enough music in the sense of, yes, the melody, I would say, is probably 75% written out and the bass line, but no harmonies, no this, no that. Structure is kind of unclear. So you have to, you have, as a completer, you have to come up with a solution. And then there are all these wonderful, nasty people like me who will say, yeah, it's great, but Schubert wouldn't have written it that way. And Mr. Turnage? Yeah, I, I sort of feel the same way in the sense that the, the example I've given about my piece, you know, I mean, in the sense that I change things, and I think composers revise until they find the, you know, it's like a painting that's not complete, you know, it, it's just, I mean, I want I, I'm curious, I want to hear it, but at the same time I feel quite queasy about it as well, I just don't think that... You know, I, I, I'm not sure if the composer. That's not the fun. I don't, I don't feel it's t particularly authentic. I feel exactly the same way about Marla 10, Brooklyn Nine. Well, I love Brooklyn Nine. I've always known it as three movements. And I'm afraid, even though you know, Simon Rattler have worked with a lot, he's got this recording out. I'm still not convinced because it's not for me. Um, so I, I, I want to hear it, but I feel slightly strange hearing it, if you see what I mean. You can be it, curious and queasy at the same yeah, time. That's that, that's yeah, that's true. Actually, the effect of what you're going to hear tonight in the Andante is, is it's fantastic. It's very, in a way, what has been accomplished is, I would say, pretty much as good as it gets because it reminds you very clearly of the very late Schubert. Mm. Kind of funny that we, we'll, at least to my knowledge, which is very little, in art, in general, music seems to be, the, classical music seems to be the only one where completions are okay. Imagine what would have happened if, um, I mean, with the knowledge of all the paintings by Rembrandt, he would have left one, pro well, actually he left many, that are just sketch, a sketch. And uh, instead of just selling that sketch in Sotheby's for $10 million, you just commission somebody who just yeah. paints it. Well, that's, that's all a, of it. That's a very good analogy. And nothing, how can you? Or, or somebody sketched out a novel Nay, uh, well, not somebody, John Steinbeck or anybody. And then Steinbeck dies, yeah. and somebody else says, oh, pff, I can take it and ride it. That, that's the best analogy I've ever heard about uh, against hearing. <laughs> <laughs> and yet we're going to, sorry, uh, it's really good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. I'm really curious. Oh, yeah. I love Schubert. And, oh, yeah. yeah. So Barber Piano Concerto, Samuel Barber's Piano Concerto. It really sounds like late 50s, early 60s, kind of angular, reminds me of a lot of the black and white films of that time, uh, photos of you know, the whole Kennedy era. It just got that, that sound to it. But it's a piece that doesn't get played very often, you, I know why you're doing this, because you're into things that won the Pulitzer Prize. 
No, 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 that has nothing to do with that. Eh? It's, th this just came about with, because, uh, so the, uh, tr true story, two years ago, at the end of the season, Garrick was here, and again worked with all of us, and we did Brahms too, and after, it was just the glory, well, it's Garrick after all, and after the, the last concert, I said, hey, Garrick, and what are we going to do next? And he literally said, anything, anywhere, anytime. So I said, well, uh, looking at your, uh, what do you think about Samuel Barber, which we haven't had for 11 years here in this hall, and it's anyway, and he said, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, and there it is, it has nothing to do, yes, Pulitzer Prize, but yeah. <laughs> It, it's just Garrick, and I mean, uh, he, let him play Twinkle Twinkle, I will like it. <laughs> I, I Do you just, know this piece? Barbers? No, I don't. No, yeah. I know a lot of Barber's music, but it's not known, especially in England. I've never heard. I, wasn't even, I didn't even know he wrote a piano concerto, right. actually, so it's very new. And I heard it last night, and I agree with you. It's, it's, it's also got sort of a bit of Rachmaninoff, a sort of romantic tradition, but it's, it, is, it is quite angular. For him, yeah, it's quite surprising. I was really quite surprised at that. And then the slow movement is a beautiful. It also exists in a version for flute and piano. It's a very lovely little cantilena. Yeah, the thing with 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 Barber, which is funny, is that towards the end of his life or in his later work, he got a little more edgy, and you hear that you very very much at the beginning. You think like, whoa, mm. or most of the last movement, it's like that. And then he stops this forward motion with high energy and gets into Barber as we know it, which is, I always said and still maintain that the best music Barber wrote is slow. With all, all the things that I really adore about him, but then mm. he comes, this, you'll hear it tonight. F really great first movement, fantastically crazy driven last movement and then the glory happens in the, in the slow, the, the slow movement is just to die for. And on this concert, there's a symphony by Mozart. The last symphony by Mozart. Some would say his greatest, certainly one of them. Strong feelings, either of you, about this particular symphony? Well, it's a masterpiece. I mean, it's incredible. But, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't, the, the thing is, it's, it's, it, there's so much reverence for Mozart that it sort of irritates me a little bit. And uh, people get very angry when I say, well, I've got even close friends of mine. And, uh, I, you know, I just find, there's, uh, of course, the greatest piece by Mozart are, are, the, are the greatest music ever written in, in some ways. But there's a lot of bad pieces as well, early ones. I mean, I think so. I mean, there's think a whole lot of It's not that they're bad, they're just, they're just not up to the level. So, so everybody that says, that worships every single note, I, I've, I've got a problem with that. So that, that's my problem. I suppose I like the sort of less sort of celebrated. I mean, I, 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 mean, I suppose the best music of Mozart, I probably still prefer to Haydn, but there's a lot of Haydn that I really love. And so I always feel a bit, you know, come on, because you know, of course Haydn doesn't get an audience as much as Mozart. I love that you two have that in common. And, oh, we, yeah, and, and we didn't know that. We didn't know this. The, yeah. thing, the thing is that, truth to be told, so I had the tremendous honor of conducting Haydn a lot. And I have done Haydn of any kind. And when you have 104 symphonies to choose, you think, well, the famous ones are past 82 or something around there. Which is plenty, of course, and it's not true. So I have conducted, of course, the big ones, 104, 104, blah, 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 uh, which are tremendous. But I also conducted 567 mm. very early, Le Matin Midi Le Soir. And it's the difference between early Haydn, as I know it, and late Haydn is amazing, glorious. Yeah, yeah. And in a way, and I, as you know, I absolutely worship Mozart, absolutely do. It's the glory of the last symphony that you are going to hear tonight is so, so, so beyond what actually I can imagine. Whereas symphony number three, 
I have no idea how it sounds because uh, mm, I know how number one sounds. <laughs> and number one is very, it's great. First Symphony Mozart, but you, you hear it, you, I conducted it, and you think, this is amazing for an eight-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. And Haydn, okay, Haydn didn't write, I think, symphonies when he was eight. But it, it's, that's, I, do, I, I don't think there is bad pieces by Mozart. It's just that. No, it's not, I, I didn't mean bad. It's just they're not at the same level. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. There is yeah. some truth to that. Yeah. Yeah. You are in store for a concert with tremendous variety. And I'm glad you were here for this conversation which is videotaped by Mr. Joe Cantrell right there. So you can tell your friends they can find this on YouTube or at allclassical.org. And we must move on. I'm Robert McBride. This is the composer, if you came in late, the composer of the first piece on the program, Mark Anthony Turnage. That is Carlos Kalmar, music director of the Oregon Symphony. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>